Hi everyone, this is Ashley Latecki Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today I'm up at the early hour of 6 a.m. to record this talk because as a mother, you just have to make the time and it doesn't always happen during the ideal times. So I just wanna start off by saying that. Uh, today's topic is on motherhood and how do we raise little verdant, verdant meaning green, green children, children that love nature, that want to use herbs, that are interested in healing and in, um, yeah, the really reciprocal relationship that can be obtained when they're really integrated into nature. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I have a few other talks planned for using herbs for kids and self-care for moms and other topics that you all have recommended or you've um, mentioned as things you're interested in. And if there's any other topics that come up for you around motherhood or kids, please post those in the comment section and I'll be sure to get to those at a later time. So for today's topic, I'll be sharing some of the ways I've integrated herbs into my kids' lives. But I want to start by just saying I am not the perfect mom and I have made many mistakes and I continue to try to progress and be a better mom and teach them more and get out of my own head. <laughs> so these sharings are really a way for me to, I think, verbalize what it is I've done in my process in coming out of some really stuck places and finding ways to integrate herbs into my, my family life so that it's not these separate worlds. It's not, this is my herbal work world, and this is my kid's world, and this is my spousal world, right? I think that that can be really hard, although there, there do need to be distinctions, right? <laughs> and I, I have a whole talk planned about um, different roles and distinctions, but really for today's topic, I want to explore how we can bring these things together. And for those of you who are new moms and you have tiny babies or babies that are pre-verbal, just let this stuff soak in because really for you, the best thing you can do is just take the herbs that are going to nourish you, get out in nature, throw out a blanket in the woods where you can just lay with your babies and take everything in. And those sorts of things are going to be best for you right now. And then as your children get older, they start to talk, they start to engage, then you might find some of these practices to be a little bit more helpful. So the first thing that I started doing with my girls really early on, besides bringing them into nature and putting them in the stroller and in the carrier uh, and getting them outside was getting them engaged with plants. And so at a really young age, I would bring my children into my yard. And even if you don't have an elaborate garden, you can still have your children help you water the plants. These can even be house plants. So have them have their own little water. You know, my girls each have their own, they're now three and five years old. So even when they were two, I would say one and a half, one and a half to two, I gave them their own watering can. So they would come out into the garden with me and help me water. And they would also help me pick little flowers like chamomile flowers. So I really wanted them to feel involved and start to form relationships with the plants. And really the best way we can do that both for ourselves and for our kids is by giving to the plants, giving them the things they need. So pruning them, watering them, harvesting them, giving, staking them up if they start to fall over, right? All of these ways that we can engage our hands and our children's hands with the plants. So that's, that's one thing you can start doing. Now, for me, growing up as a child, I talked to the plants. I spoke to the trees. I really believed that I had an ability to communicate with the plants. Now, as an adult, I, I feel like it's a way more subtle thing than I thought it was as a child. So I still do talk to my house plants and I still water them and I'll dust off their leaves and I'll say, oh, look how beautiful you are. Or look at you growing so tall. And I let my children hear me say that. And I let them talk to my house plants too and talk to the plants outside. And it's so beautiful. It's so sweet to hear my little three-year-old just say, pretty flowers you have. Oh, I like this one because it's very, very pink. <laughs> you know, it's just so sweet. And then they, I think when they talk to plants, just like with what we do, we start to respect them. 
we start to really know that they, there's someone home there. They're not just these objects, they're not inert. They are alive. And, and that by speaking to something and acknowledging it, um, there becomes this uh, idea of value and respect. And we want to instill that in our children, especially as we are facing more and more environmental stressors and climate change, all of these different things, we can start to teach our children about the power uh, of, of nature and, and how we, we really are here not to take from nature, but to give back to nature and to learn and study from the natural world. So that is another idea and way that you can engage yourself and your children in plants. Also teaching children really simple plants. And, and I, I want to say too that you don't have to be you know, a professional herbalist by any means to start to teach your children about plants. It can be very simple and it can be very, it can be um, a way for you to learn too and for you to access your own inner childhood curiosity. So for example, there's this wonderful app that I have on my phone called, uh, what is it called? I think it's called, it's a plant identification app. It's called Picture This. So you can download it for free. Oh, no, actually you can't. I think you have to buy it, but it's well worth it. I use it all the time with my kids. So there are still, my mom, my, my um, older daughter, Gigi, asked me what, one night, she said, mom, do you know all the plants? And I said, no, honey, I do not know all the plants. There's so many plants I don't know, but there are some that I do know and I know them well. And I said, but that's why we, we have our app and why we go out and we learn and we look for new plants because isn't it fun? She's like, yeah. So you don't have to be perfect. You can tell your kids, you know, I, I don't know all the plants, but here are the ones that I do know. And teach them ones that are really easy to identify that are prolific in your area. That's a really good place to start. And even better if they're medicinal. So for example, one of the first herbs I taught my kids was plantain. Plantago major and Plantago minor. They both grew all over my yard in Maryland. And it's a medicinal plant that can be used for bites and stings, which is really helpful for kids if they get a bee sting or a bug bite or a mosquito bite or a spider bite, right? Or a tick bite. Um, plantain has this drawing action where it will draw the venom or the itchiness out of that bite area. And you do that by making a spit poultice, which kids find really fascinating because they like to, you know, ooh, spit, yuck. <laughs> but it really, you know, it, it not only does it really work, but uh, it's it's a really easy herb to find. So that's a great one to start kids off with. Another one is yarrow, which is a wonderful herb for cuts and bleeding. Chamomile is a great one if you can grow it because you can teach your kids about using chamomile for tummy aches or if they're just if they're sick and they need help sleeping or even if they aren't sick and they need help sleeping and if you can't grow chamomile if you have a bag of it of you know really nice high quality organic chamomile flowers, you, know, you can just have them smell it and say, this one's really good if you have a tummy ache and then give it to them when they have a tummy ache. And the thing you want your kids to start doing is asking for the herbs. Then you know they've remembered it. So when they get a bug bite, they'll say, where's the plantain? Or you'll say, you can ask them, what herb could we use for your bug bite? What do you think? Are there any that come to mind? Or oh no, you've got a tummy ache. What should we do? Are there any plants that you know that are helpful for tummy ache, right? And so then it can be kind of this quizzing and learning and asking and, and eventually they'll ask for the plants. They'll know exactly what they need and they'll know the difference between a catnip tummy ache and a chamomile tummy ache, right? Um, so it's really, really, really wonderful stuff to teach them. The catnip tummy ache is a little more gassy and colicky, whereas a uh, chamomile tummy ache is a little bit more, it's more like tension and, um, and maybe nausea. At least that's how I think about it. Another thing that really is wonderful that I started doing with my girls when they were really young was tea parties. And I called it Tea Party Tuesday. And it was on Tuesdays for a while. And then I had to switch to Wednesdays because my work schedule changed. But it was always, you know, once a week we would have tea parties. And in the beginning, I would blend the herbs and try to make it taste good. I would do a lot of nettles, chamomile. Sometimes I was adding a little bit of lavender flowers. Um, lick, a little bit of licorice is safe for kids. I also would add a tea bag. There's a, um, I forget, it's an organic tea company that's in those cans. 
think it's Republic of Tea. They make a chocolate strawberry round tea bag. And I would sometimes add that in just because it's fun and they love the taste. And I could still get the nettles and the other herbs in, but you know, whatever you have to make sure that they taste good for kids in, in the beginning so that they're interested and they like it. So I would sometimes add in one of those tea bags, especially if I wanted to give them some of the bitter herbs, like maybe a little yarrow or something that's a little bit more pungent. Um, but they actually, as they got older, I would let them blend their own teas for our tea party Tuesdays. And they would choose things like oregano and um, yeah, what else did they, and Tulsi or holy basil. And I would just let them, I would, you know, I would put out, obviously, I wouldn't let them pick anything, but I would pull out all of the ones that are safe for kids. And I would let them take their little spoons and dip them in the, in the little containers and then pour it in. And you know, I would oversee it. But again, herbs that are generally safe for kids, just letting them mix it together. And they loved that. And then as we would sit down, I would say, do you remember what's in your tea? And they would say, well, we put burdock and cinnamon and chamomile and nettle, and, you know, and, and I would say, I taste the nettle, I taste the green, what is the green, right? So I would just start to engage their senses through this. And we would often make cookies alongside of it, which was always, you know, kids love baking. So I would make these little biscotti cookies, which is an old Italian recipe my grandmother gave me, or we would make um, these little um, no-bake uh, granola balls. So there's a lot, you know, it, it, and then what we would do is we would dip that in the tea. So it became this whole very interactive experience and they would just look forward to it every week. And then they would always get a little bit of herbal knowledge dipped in there as well. <laughs> Another thing that is a great way to foster children's love of plants is listening to their natural curiosity and which plants they're naturally attracted to. So for example, my daughter, Gigi, she loves yarrow. She just, every time she's out and she sees it, she just wants to stop and look at it and touch it. And so I bought her a yarrow flower essence from a company that my friend, uh, she makes the most amazing flower essences. Let's let the camera, the name of the um, company is, let's see, Sacred sacred forest flower essences. And here it is. So this one's holy basil, but uh, they make a ton of flower essences and flower essences are safe for children of all ages. It's basically the energetic imprint of the plant. And so I, I bought each of my daughters, I let them pick, let them look at the pictures. And of course my older one picked yarrow younger one, actually she picked pink, pink yarrow. She wanted the pink yarrow. My old one wanted the white yarrow that she knows. And so every night before bed, I just give them a few drops of the flower essence and it's protective for young children, yarrow in particular. And pink yarrow is especially protective for very sensitive children. And my younger one is sensitive and boy, she chose, she went right to it. <laughs> so they could also take it during the day or, you know, keep it in their little bag at school if they're school age and carry that plant medicine with them. And that can be a really nice way for them to start to feel that connection, connection and relationship. And if they're old enough, maybe like seven or eight, and they can dose it themselves, then they can, they can carry it with them wherever they go. Also artwork can be a really fun way to engage with, with plants. So I'm not an artist by any stretch, but I really love watercolor painting. So what my daughters and I have done, have gone, we've gone out into the yard and just looked for whatever's flowering and brought it inside, stuck it in a little vase, and then we paint it and we practice it together. And you know, I'm then getting practice in something that I'm interested in. And then they get to see me doing something I love, which I think, you know, it, kids learn by example. So the fact that we're doing these things, I'm having fun. They see me having fun. They know it's okay to have fun and they know it's okay to follow their interests. That's really good medicine for children because, you know, it's <laughs> a lot of times we, we really want our children to achieve certain things and there's a lot of pressure on them in a lot of different ways. And so instilling in them the value of fun and following their own hobbies and self-interests is extremely valuable. So we just painted, uh, we found a Monarda fistulosa, and so we painted it, and they each had their own version of it. And it was 
beautiful. And then we put them all side by side up on the wall. And it was, it was a really fun, easy way. And I was able to talk about the plant and its medicine while we were painting and ask them, what do you notice about the flowers? What do you notice? Can you smell this? What does that smell like to you? Right. And then we can engage and children love engaging their senses. Children of all ages love engaging their senses with the plants. So I think that's all for now. And I do have a few resources for you. My friend Christine Brown has a wonderful website and program called um, uh, Herbal Roots Zine. And uh, I'm going to just look up her website here. So if you go to um, Herbal Roots Zine, it's, it's basically she has monthly a monthly subscription plan where she'll mail you or email you PDFs of, um, so you go to herbalrootzine.com and she'll send you information about um, plants and workbooks that you can do with your kids with crossword puzzles and coloring pages. It's really good for kids, I would say maybe six and older. That's a great resource. And then also learningherbs.com have a wonderful list of children's books and children's fairy books that you might find really helpful. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you do with your kids and I'll see you all soon for more herbal talks and I hear my daughter's awake. So I'm going to go love her up. You do.